As I indicated in my earlier communication, the special sitting has been convened to hear charges on the proposed removal from office by impeachment uh, of Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the governor of Meru County. Pursuant to section 33.3b of the County Government Act and Standing Order 81A of the Senate Standing Orders, I hereby proceed to read the charges again as the governor of Meru County as contained in the motion of impeachment by the County Assembly of Meru. Charge 1. Nepotism, illegal appointments, unlawful dismissals, and usurpation of the constitutional and statutory functions of county organs. The particulars of these allegations include 1. Appointment of a husband to county offices. 2. Roadside appointment of county workers at Timau. 3. Roadside appointment of county workers at Nkubu. 4. Roadside appointment of county workers at Kianjai. 5. Establishment of an illegal committee for the Meru municipality. Senators, you may walk in, please. Charge 2. Incitement, bullying, vilification, and misleading campaigns against other leaders. The particulars of this allegation include 1. Humiliation of the Meru County Assembly Minority Leader, vilification of the Meru County Assembly Minority Whip and other leaders. 3. Vilification of the Senator of Meru County. 4. Vilification of the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture. 5. Vilification of the Member of the National Assembly for Tigania East constituency. And lastly, vilification of the Catholic Church and clergy. Charge number three, forceful entry into the county assembly, precincts and mobilization of unlawful riots against members of the county assembly. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor, one, forcibly entered the precincts of the county assembly, two, falsely accused members of the county assembly and other elected leaders of cartelism, blackmail, greed, corruption, and intimidation. Three, organize a violent demonstration against the members of the county assembly at the assembly precincts. Number four, address a, a riotous crowd at the precincts of the county assembly. Charge number four, violation of public finance management laws. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor, one, directed the Meru Teaching and Referral Hospital to spend all revenue at source. Two, issued purported waivers on fees at the Meru Teaching and Refer Referral Hospital. Three, directed county officers to participate in advancing the interest of Bait TV, a private media station. Charge number five, misconduct relating to the nomination of CECs. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor won vilified members of the county assembly for refusing to approve some nominees to the county executive committee. Two, falsely accused members of the county assembly of shortchanging Kesti Misheni and other nominees for appointment to the CEC. Three, illegally instructed Kesti Misheni to usurp the statutory functions of the Igoji Westwood Retention Enhancement Fund Committee by identifying the persons that would benefit from the county bursary funds. Four, fail to submit names of other candidates to the county assembly for approval for appointment to the CEC. Five, re uh, reorganize her government to six departments and three CEC members after the rejection of some nominees instead of submitting names of other candidates to the county assembly for approval. Six, so to appoint to her government and actively work with losers of the 2022 county elections instead of duly elected MCAs to star wrangles within the assembly. Honorable senators, in terms of the way forward following the reading of the charges against the governor, 
Standing Order 81B of the Senate Standing Orders, as read together with Section 33.3B of the County Government Act, give the Senate two options on how to proceed with this matter. The Senate may, A, in, by resolution, appoint a special committee comprising 11 of its members to investigate the matter, or B, investigate the matter in plenary. As listed at order number six in today's order paper, the Senate Majority Leader will shortly give notice of motion for the establishment of a special committee, and the motion thereon is listed at order number eight. Should this motion be carried, the special committee will be required under section 33.4 of the County Government Act and standing order 82 of the Senate to investigate the matter and to report to the Senate on whether it finds the particulars of allegations against the governor to have been substantiated. In the event that the motion for the establishment of the special committee does not pass, the fallback position is that the Senate shall proceed to investigate and conduct the matter in plenary. In this event, I will appoint the dates on which Senate will sit in plenary to hear and determine the charges against the governor. Honorable Senators, it is not worth it, and I wish to emphasize to all Honorable Senators that when we come to the debate on the motion for establishment of our special committee, debate on the motion shall be limited to the substance of the motion, principally whether or not to establish the special committee. It will not be a debate on the substance of the impeachment or its merits, propriety, prudence, or even the constitutionality or legality of the process that have preceded the submission of this matter to the Senate. It is therefore not permissible to deviate to any matters other than the motion before the Senate. I also wish to inform honorable senators to, to desist from publicly commenting on the merits or demerits of the, of the impeachment motion before the Senate. Doing so will amount to anticipation of debate, which is an infringement of Standing Order 99. Therefore, it shall be out of order within the meaning of Standing Order 122 for any senator to make comments, whether written or spoken, in relation to the conduct of the governor or the impeachment process, which is outside the confines of the impeachment proceedings. As such comments may prejudice the just outcome of the process. Honorable Senators, this is the first impeachment hearing in the 13th Parliament. Such a hearing is one of the most crucial oversight tools and singular roles of the Senate. In undertaking this mandate, the Senate will be sitting as a quasi-judicial body and will conduct investigations into the alleged infra uh, infractions of the Constitution and the law, and thereafter make its determination in this matter. I conclude by urging all honorable senators to exercise the highest level of responsibility on this matter. Honorable senators, I thank you. Next order. Order number four, petitions. Order number five, papers. Order number six, notices of motion. Majority 